And now, it's time for another Dice Tower Review with Tom Vassell. Hey folks, I'm Tom Vassell, and today we're taking a look at Little Big Fish. Now, Little Big Fish is a two-player abstract strategy style game from Black Rock Games, uh, or the Flying Games, I guess is who this one's from. It is a game in which you have fish, and you're going to be moving the fish around, trying to eat the other fish. Man, this brings back memories. When I was a kid, I played a 1980s Commodore 64 game called Chomp, in which you swam a fish around and tried to eat other fish. It was super fun, and I was really bad at it. But I like the idea of that. Let's see if this game is like that. The board is made up of four different sections. You can place them any way you want to. The rule book has a suggested one that they suggest that you start with. But it, I don't think it really matters in the long run. Each player is going to start with three small fish on open water spots on their side of the board. You also have four plankton tiles of a color. And it shows yours on the other side. So on your turn, you can move one fish two spaces, or you can move two fish one space. Uh, these shipwrecks here can only be moved through by small fish. Then also you get points for, I mean, you get things happen basically on where you, if you land here, hey, another baby fish, a small fish comes out. If you land on the plankton, you replace your fish by a fish of a larger size. You also turn this over to show that you use the green plankton so it can't happen again. If you end your turn in a question mark, you'll draw a tile from here, which could be anything. This thing here, for example, fisherman just caught you and you're gone. Uh, here you can grow in size. Uh, there's another fisherman. Here you can rotate one of the tiles. Here you get another new fish. And so those are the different options that will show up. And once you go through all these tiles, you'll flip them over again. You can also land on a fish that's the same size as you or smaller and eat that fish. And that's the whole game. The first person to eat five opponents fish or if they wins or if one person is down to one fish in the board, then your opponent wins. That's the game. Okay, so the tiles for this game are nice and thick. Although a little boring. Uh, I mean, I guess when you turn them sideways, it's kind of weird because the water, you can see how the rocks fit together on the different sides. Um, I guess it doesn't matter. They don't always match though. It's kind of weird. Like I, I had them so that they matched. I, that doesn't, I don't know, it's just the, the the visual effect. I mean, the symbols themselves are pretty easy. The fish themselves are really cool. You can see there's big fish, medium fish. Um, the only problem with these fish are they do tend to fall over really easily, especially the small ones. It just takes a little bit to knock them over. Not a big deal, but they really are cool. And I, obviously, they're the draw to the game are these components. These tiles are also nice and thick. So overall, I'll say production is pretty good. So the draw of this game is obviously going to be the, you know, the, the fish. You, I, I could see this game at a convention and people being excited about it saying, oh wow, look at the fish, I can move the fish around and capture things, that's neat. And there's a lot of games out there where you move pieces around and capture them. Chess, checkers, abstract strategy games such as these. Um, here's the deal with this one though, it's just not that interesting. You, there's not a lot of interesting moves to make. So on your first turn, you're obviously going to bump a couple of your fish up to medium fish, maybe or maybe take a medium fish and move it to a large fish. Although your large and medium fishes are hampered by those shipwrecks that they can't go through. But the game is going to, you, there's no like surprises. You can move one fish, two spaces, or two fish, one space. So if I move my fish within two spaces of yours, your fish can get it, unless mine's bigger than yours, in which case you need to run away, or put one of your fish within striking distance of mine. You remember checkers? Before you really knew how checkers work, you're like, I'll jump yours, but then you'll jump mine. Is that worth it? In this game, it's really not, I mean, sometimes it's worth it to capture a fish because you get closer to the end, but you're kind of like pushing and fainting and coming back, and then we have these random tiles there. Random tiles are worth trying out, right? Because if you go to a random tile, you might get bigger, or you might get another fish, or you might die. Now, the game is so fast that this randomness isn't a really huge detriment to the game. And in fact, I don't hate this game. 
but I also don't really like it either because I don't find it interesting. I like the concept, like, ooh, fish running around, swimming around, chomping each other. Ooh, I can grow. Ooh, I can move. But this game doesn't do anything different than I've seen before, except maybe have the random tiles where you can get killed. And that's not that exciting. Um, and the whole plankton, I know that they do that so that you're forced to go after each other, so you just can't grow up to big fish and then move. You're only going to be able to grow a few times over the course of the game. But I just wasn't, I, I don't know. There's just nothing here that grabs me. Visually, the game looks pretty cool. But when you play it, there's so many other two-player games moving pieces around and capturing them, like chess, for example, that seem to be so much better than this one. And while I'm willing to give leeway to it because it's a light, easy game to get into, I also need some interesting decisions, and I don't think this game really has them. So unfortunately, I really can't recommend Little Big Fish. Dice Tower Judgment, nah, not for me.